But see, that's the point. Like, that's the point. Have you come to the place in your life where you are inviting Jesus into every aspect of your life? Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and then all of these things, and his righteousness, by the way. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and then all of these things will be added unto you. See, it's not until we make Jesus first, until we give Jesus preeminence in our life in every area. It's not that we're seeking after perfection. The point is, I need Jesus. I need Jesus in my marriage. I need Jesus with my children. I need Jesus in my occupation. And us as as Christians living in this society that we're living in, we just want to incorporate Jesus into different aspects of our life. Jesus, make my day a little bit better. Jesus, make sure I don't hit any red lights on my way to work today. Jesus, make sure that all my co-workers are nice to me today like we're just wanted him to do these little things for us to make our day go better but can i tell you that jesus wants every aspect of your life he wants preeminence he wants to be first he wants to be the center but the reward is is that when you seek the first the kingdom make his kingdom first and his righteousness then there's an there's addition that comes to your life And see, that's where the benefits are. And that's why we get confused sometimes. That's why we get confused. Because God does want to prosper you. I believe that. God does want you to be in good health. I believe that. God does want good things for you. I believe that. But all of those things are secondary to Christ being first and foremost in our life. We seek Him first. We make Him first. And then all of these things are added unto us. I'm not seeking the benefits. I'm seeking the benefactor. The benefits just come. (laughs) They just come. Because he's so good. But we make him first. That he may hold first place. That he may have preeminence in our life. And see, let me go back to verse 11. Long suffering with joy, strengthen with all might according to his glorious power for all patience and long suffering with joy. And here's my point is that just because you are a Christian and because Christ lives in you doesn't mean that you're not going to go through difficulty, doesn't mean that you're not, not going to face opposition. The good news for you is that when you face difficulty or face opposition, it's an opportunity for the Christ that's in you to be the hope of glory in that situation. Count it all joy, brethren. Why? Because the Christ who lives in you is able to come out of you in the midst of all of that stuff. We don't realize the power that we carry. We don't realize the power we carry. I'm so thankful for Mel. You know, she's had a revelation. It is as just it is so simple to just lay your hand on somebody and just say, be healed in Jesus name. We want to complicate everything. We want to make it all about our eloquence and our great expounding words on why or what, you know, why this person should be healed. It's not there's no reason other than Jesus died on the cross and purchased his healing through the stripes on his back. It's that simple. So be healed in Jesus' name. And I pray today that God would give you a revelation. God would give you a revelation of Christ in you. Of giving Jesus preeminence in your life in every area of your life. That's the only place where victory is found. Will you stand?